We are rolling and we are live from Craft Field in Grand Forks, North Dakota as the 9 and 13 Wheat City Whiskey Jacks take on the 16 and 6 Fremont Moo. This is Expedition League Baseball. Thank you for joining us on the official Wheat City Whiskey Jack YouTube channel. My name is Zach Berman. I'll be your announcer for these next three games. Of course, one tonight and two tomorrow. Three games in less than 48 hours between the Moo and Whiskey Jacks. Moo coming off a three-game sweep at the hands of the Badlands Big Sticks. That was up in Dickinson, North Dakota. The Moo, before that, we on a five game win streak and before that five game win streak and 11 game win streak. So Fremont started off this season white hot, won 11 of their first 13. They are the defending champions of the Expedition League, but a little bit of a cold streak and they're looking to rebound as for Wheat City. Right in the thick of things in that Clark division. And let's get our starting lineups up and ready. Starting for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks tonight, Caleb McDowell leads off batting first and playing catcher. Ethan Sitzman batting second at short. Jake Jelly batting third and playing first base. Jackson Sorensen batting cleanup and playing the designated hitter. Owen Viano batting fifth in left field. Dean Bittner batting sixth at third base. Houston Fogelstrom batting seventh and in right field. Garrett Olson batting eighth at second base and Trey Guajardo batting ninth in center field and pitching of course for the Whiskey Jacks is Ronnie Peepmeyer. As for the Moo, they're managed by Shea Bennett, assistant coach by Jet Trevino and leading off for the Moo, Darian Morphew at second in the batting order batting and playing third base is Peyton Leeper, batting third and DHing tonight. Luke White, batting fourth. Brock Reller, batting fifth. Taylor Howell, he's starting at first base. Will Bush, behind the plate, catching. Batting seventh. Ryan Koski, out in the left field, batting eighth. Braden Webb, playing second base. And Dylan Sears in the nine hole. And starting for the Moo is Dawson Linder. Nine and 13 versus 16 and six. Wheat City, of course, coming off of a 6-5 victory against the Sioux, or excuse me, an 8-6 victory against the Sioux Falls Sunfish, a series win for the Whiskey Jacks down in Sioux Falls. Wheat City though, and it, in their second year of play. Of course, Wheat City is not Grand Forks, but it is in fact Brandon, Manitoba, and due to the COVID restrictions and the log jam at the border, Grand Forks is home. So whether you're from Manitoba, Canada, or United States, or you're just listening to listen, sit back, relax, and enjoy. First pitch. And the National Anthems coming up next. You're listening and watching Wheat City Whiskey Jack Baseball.
We're back from Craft Field in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It's the Fremont Moo and the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. We thank you for joining us on this fine Wednesday evening. It was raining a little bit earlier now, 86 and partly sunny. Not expecting anything in the precipitation department for the rest of the night. Starting for Wheat City is Ronnie Peepmeyer. Ronnie, right-hand pitcher for the Whiskey Jacks out of Woodstock, Georgia. Catching, of course, Peepmeyer is Caleb McDowell. Let's go around the horn on defense. Jelly at first. Olsen at second, Sitzman at short, Bittner at third, and then left to right field, respectively, Viano, Guajardo, and Fogelstrom. Now stepping up momentarily is the leadoff hitter for the Moo. That is Darian Morphew, talented lefty bat out of Brown University, native of Tyler, Texas. 347 average on the campaign. So if you don't know, I am actually one of the two voices of the Fremont Moo. However, due to circumstances, I have been summoned to work for the Whiskey Jack. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. First pitch and baseball from Grand Forks. Once and once again, your dimensions out in the outfield, 330 to both poles, 375 to both gaps, 410 to dead center. And we are off and running. First pitch and coming from Pete Meyer to Morphew. Righty to lefty. Here's the first pitch, and it's low for ball one. Underway, 7.05 Central Standard Time. Morphew, 25 for 72, no home runs, seven RBIs. The 1 0 to Morphew swung on and hit through the left field hole for a leadoff base hit. So Darian Morphew on the 1 0 pitch goes inside out on his swing and reaches first on a leadoff single. Morphew a threat to steal. And that goes for a lot of these Fremont Moo hitters. They are quite fast, and Coach Bennett likes them to run at will. Peyton Leeper now another lefty bat. He's actually a switch hitter. In against Pete Meyer, first pitch outside ball one. Peyton Leeper hitting 269 home run, five RBIs. Native of Mocaine, Missouri, outside of Jefferson City. The 1 0 is in there in the inside corner from Pete Meyer for a called strike one. Leeper, a student at Southeastern Missouri State, or SEMO, as folks down in neck of my woods, Columbia, Missouri. I, of course, go to Mizzou, and that's it high in the air. Center field, back goes Guajardo, back, and he makes the catch. A couple steps before the warning track for out number one. Peyton Leeper actually played in the regionals, the College World Series for Southeastern Missouri State. So now Luke White, designated hitter, powerful right-hand hitter, digs in for the move. Out of Lewis Clark State, native of Lewiston, Texas. One on one out, first pitch outside and low for ball number one. One ball, no strikes, one out. Runner off first is Morphew, a threat to steal. Here's the 1 0, and it's taken on the outside corner for a called strike one. Pete Meyer, 11 innings pitch, nine strikeouts, an ERA of nine. One ball, one strike, one out, top of the first from Grand Forks. And that pitch is swung on and popped in the air out towards the Wheat City bullpen. And Jake Jelly makes the catch out and right for out number two. So White jammed on a pop-up. Nice pitch there by Pete Meyer for out number two. And that brings up the dangerous Brock Reller batting 4-15, 7 Seven home runs, 21 RBIs. 
one of the best power hitters in the league. However, he has not hit one out in almost two weeks, more than two weeks, I believe. Righty to lefty, here's the first pitch to Reller outside for ball one. Still scoreless top of the first inning. It is a seven game hitting streak for Brock Reller. That one checking on first is Pete Meyer. And now he goes, checks on first again. He's got Morphew caught up in a rundown. They throw to second in time and Morphew is picked off to retire the side. They score one, three, six, and after half an inning of play, the Whiskey Jacks coming to bat. You're watching Wheat City Whiskey Jack Baseball. Bottom of the first inning of play here from Kraft Field. The Wheat City Whiskey Jacks coming to bat. And once again, let's run through that lineup. Caleb McDowell leads off catching out of Grand View University. Batting second, Whitman College student Ethan Sitzman playing short. And batting third, the first three up, University of Minnesota Crookston, Jake Jelly. Dawson Linder, right-hand pitcher in for the move. One of their better arms. We have not seen him pitch in Fremont since last week. Of course, the Moo defensive alignments. Linder on the mound. Bush behind the plate. First base, Taylor Howell. Second base, Braden Webb. Shortstop, Dylan Sears. Third base, Peyton Leeper. And then from left to right in the outfield, Ryan Koski, Darian Morphew, and... Brock Reller. So Caleb McDowell leads off for Wheat City. He's going to be hitting from the right-hand side. Linder, 3-0, a 162 ERA. A tough cookie on the mound. McDowell, righty to righty against Linder. First pitch high and inside for ball number one. One ball, no strikes. The count on Caleb McDowell. And here's the 1-0, and it's up high again. 2-0 on Caleb McDowell. McDowell, 23 for 79, 291 average, two homers, 13 RBIs. Righty to righty. Linder, the 2-0 to McDowell. Here's the pitch. Inside again, and McDowell. Nice job there on the take, 3-0. Three balls, no strikes. Wonder if we get the green light up nice and early. The 3-0 pitch is poured over the inner half of the plate for strike number one. Hitters count for Caleb McDowell. 3-1 pitch from Dawson Linder. Righty to righty, here's the 3-1. Swung on it, high in the air, deep to left field. Back goes Koski on the track at the wall, and it's off the wall and left. McDowell is going to hold up at first. I think he thought it was gone. As it went off the Hugo's Family Marketplace sign out in left field. So a long, loud leadoff single for Caleb McDowell and the Whiskey Jacks in business early. As that was a 3-1 pitch right over the heart of the plate. And McDowell crushed it. 
missed a home run by maybe a foot. Another right-hand hitter, Ethan Sitzman. In McDowell, runner off first. Righty to righty, first pitch, low in the dirt. And an uncharacteristically wild beginning for Peyton Linder. 1-0 and count to Sitzman. Pitches it high in the air down the left field line. That's going to hook foul. Count stay or goes to 1-1. One and one. Out of Whitman College is Ethan Sitzman. As already a meeting on the mound between Bush and Leeper. So already a meeting on the mound with nobody out and a runner on. This is the first of a three game, two day road trip for the Moo. Three game, two day home trip for Hastings. McDowell at first. The 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball over the outside part of the plate for strike two. One ball, two strikes, and nobody out. Runner off first is McDowell taking a bit of a lead. Here's the one two from Linder, gets his signs, his signals, and delivers. Swing and a miss. So Sitzman goes down, swinging Dawson Linder, his first strikeout of the day. 20th strikeout of the season for Linder. And that brings up Jake Jelly, first baseman out of Minnesota Crookston, teammates with Brock Reller, who's the Moo right fielder. Jake Jelly, right hand hitter. And a local, East Grand Forks, Minnesota. Land of a thousand lakes. First pitch to Jelly, runner off first is McDowell and it's in the dirt, nice block by Bush. And he's got McDowell caught up, the throw to second is not in time. So McDowell able to swipe second after all of that as the Moo had a little bit of a communication error. Not sure if they're gonna score in a wild pitch or what. Anyway, it is one and oh with a runner on second. So no double play ball. As Bush went to first and Howell hesitated a little bit before throwing over to Webb and McDowell slid in ahead of the throw. One ball pitch is lined into left field. That is a base hit in front of Koski. Coming around third and holding it third is McDowell as he was throwing up the stop sign. So two quick hits. For off of Dawson Linder, Jake Jelly with a single and the Whiskey Jacks in business. Runners on the corners and one out. So now Jackson Sorensen designated hitting big left-hand hitter. Tonight's designated hitter off third is Jelly off of, or off third is McDowell off first is Jelly, righty to lefty. Linder at the belt and he deals. Taken for strike one. Fastball at the knees. 0 and 1 on Jackson Sorensen. Runner off third, McDowell. Runner off first, Jelly. Runner goes. Bush double clutches. It's called strike two. Bush couldn't get a grip on it, so Jelly steals second. No double play ball, second and third, one out, count 0-2. On Sorensen, 10 for 37 is Jackson, one home run, nine RBIs for the big lefty out of Gonzaga. The 0-2 pitch, Linder deals, and it is low for ball one, just barely missing. Runners off second and third, one out. Wheat City. Threatening. Righty to lefty, tough spot for Linder. Here is the one, two. And Linder deals inside, two and two. Nice job by Sorensen to battle back. So two balls, two strikes, one out. And an early big spot for the Whiskey Jacks as they look to take an early lead. Here comes the two, two. Linder deals and it swung on and missed. Sorensen 
down on strike, second strikeout of the inning for Linder, and now two down here in the second for Owen Viano. Viano, left fielder out of Umpaqua Community College in the state of Oregon. Umpaqua in the Eugene area, not too far from the University of Oregon. Righty to righty, the pitch to Viano is low, but called strike one at the knees. Linder very good with ball placement, and Will Bush quite a good catcher behind the plate, a good, talented battery for the Moo. Big reason why they're 16 and six. One strike pitches. Was it fouled or checked? What are they gonna call it? I think they're gonna call it a wild. Let's see here. Is it a wild pitch? Yes, it is. Hold on a second. They are saying it's a wild pitch. So McDowell does score. I wasn't sure if it hit the bat of Viano or not. But they're going to score at a wild pitch. So coming home is McDowell to score. Jelly over to third. And the Whiskey Jacks have a 1 nothing lead. So now an 0 2 count. They called it a swinging strike. And here's the 0 2. Outside one and two on Viano. Viano 250 on the campaign, one home run, two RBIs. One in for Wheat City in the bottom of the first on the wild pitch. And here is the one two pitch from Linder. Time is called. So McDowell reached first on a single, advanced on a stolen base, reached third on the single, and then scored. Here's the one two, and it's high and inside two and two. Sitzman struck out, Jelly singled, Sorensen struck out, but Jelly stole second, wiping out the double play, the 2-2 pitch, high. Count goes full on Viano, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Here is the 3-2, Linder deals to Viano, righty to righty, the pitch. Is swung on and lays fair down the left field line. It goes into the corner all the way to the wall. Jelly scores easily. Viano chugging his way to second. He'll wind up with a stand-up RBI double, and the Whiskey Jacks lead two to nothing. Oh, and Viano ripped the full count breaking ball down the left field line, past a diving leaper. Jelly strolls in, and Wheat City leads two zip. And the Whiskey Jacks have the defending Expedition League champions behind the eight ball here in the bottom of the first. So now Dean Bittner, the right-hand hitter, takes a first pitch called strike on the outside part of the plate, count 0-1. So Linder is a 162 ERA, and he's already given up two runs. Uncharacteristic for Dawson. Runner off first is off a second is Viano. And the pitch is missing outside on the curveball. One ball, one strike, two outs, two in. For the Whiskey Jacks on a wild pitch and an RBI double by Owen Viano. 1-1. One, one. Swung on and hit high in the air, center field. Under it, Darian Morphew settles and makes the catch to retire the side, but the Whiskey Jacks get two runs to cross. They leave a runner on second after one. You're listening to Wheat City Whiskey Jack YouTube and the Whiskey Jacks lead two to nothing.
Top of the second inning, you're listening to the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks YouTube channel. I'm Zach Berman here for temporary play-by-play -play duty and Brock Reller who was on base when Darian Morphew was caught stealing up at the plate. Reller, big lefty power bat for the Fremont Moo. His third year with the team. Reller in against the righty Pete Meyer, first pitch to Reller, low, 1-0 and on Brock. Brock Reller is a townie, he's a Grand Forks native. I'm sure he's got a couple people out in the stands watching today. The 1-0 to Reller, and it's over the outside part of the plate count, 1-1. One and one. There was a weekend, two weekends ago, three weekends ago now, out in Wheat City where the Moose swept the the Badlands Big Sticks and Reller hit five home runs in the series as Reller fouls the 1-1 one, one off from Pete Meyer. Left side a play, count one and two on Brock Reller. It is Reller, Howell, and Bush due up in the top of the second inning. The Whiskey Jacks lead two nothing. Reller after this season will be transferring to Northeastern State in Oklahoma. The one two is called strike three. Brock Reller sent down on strikes. He asks for an explanation from the home plate blue. And there's one down. First strike out of the game for Pete Meyer. Taylor Howell, student at Memphis University in the American Athletic Conference. Digs in, native of Jackson, Tennessee, 260, 260 average home run on his resume. Four in his last five games for Howell have featured a hit. Righty to righty against Pete Meyer. The 0-1 to Howell high for ball one. Due up for Wheat City in the bottom of the second inning. 7-8-9 Fogles from Os Olsen and Guajardo. Outfield playing pretty deep. The 1-0 is high, 2-0. So for those of you who are listening and you're not going to get any more of me after these three games. Just a little background. I am a junior, or I just finished my junior year at the University of Missouri. I am a native of the Jersey Shore. So I grew up in and around the New York City metropolitan area. The 2 0 to Howell swung on and hit in the air to left field. That ball is back and caught out and left by Viano for out number one. So Howell flies out for out number two, excuse me. Like I was saying, I'm a journalism student at Mizzou, and when I'm not with the Moo, or in this case, with the Whiskey Jacks, I am a play-by-play -play voice for the student voice of the Missouri Tigers, KCOU 88.1 FM. So Will Bush, two for nine with a home run, batting from the right-hand side, North Dakota State product, and Bush swings and fouls. The first pitch fastball off left field side from Pete Meyer, count 0 and 1. Bush, a native of New Prague, Minnesota. The Moo are dangerous when behind. They can play from any deficit. The 0 1 to Bush, swung on and missed. And a quick 0 2 count for Pete Meyer on Bush. Righty to righty, nobody on, two outs, two nothing Whiskey Jacks. On a night that's become quite beautiful here in Grand Forks. The 0-2, swung on in line, back up the middle for a base hit as Pete Meyer attempted to throw his glove at the ball. Or at least he tried to go behind the back, maybe stab it with his glove, but it almost looked as if he was throwing the, the glove at the baseball but a two out single for Bush, second hit of the game for the move for Ryan Koski, product of University of Nebraska Kearney, native of Kearney. Koski hitting just a touch under two, no home runs, far four RBIs. Runner off first is Bush, the first pitch to the righty Kearney and it's in the dirt for ball one. Nice snag there by McDowell, pr likely preventing a wild pitch and an advancement of the runner. Bush, not a known threat to steal, but he's got 
the speed to pull it off should the circumstances require it. 1-0, Pete Meyer deals righty to righty to Koski, and it's low over the part of the plate for strike one. So one ball, one strike, two outs. Moo Trail, two zip to the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Runner off first is Will Bush, one of the newer additions to this Moo roster. 1-1 one, one to Pete Meyer. Swung on and missed. Koski swinging for the fences there. Count one and two on Ryan. Pete Meyer had a nine ERA coming into this, but he has looked like someone with an ERA far lower against this vaunted Moo lineup. Runner off first, the one-two pitch incoming. Pete Meyer deals and it's low in the dirt again. Nice stab by McDowell. Count goes two and two, and McDowell threw it away from Pete Meyer. Thankfully for the Whiskey Jacks, it stays in the infield. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. I tell you what the attendance is like, but from my viewpoint, the attendance is on top of us. Of course, we are in a box, a glass windowed box right behind home plate. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Pete Meyer, and it's swung on and chopped weakly to third. Charging and firing in time across the diamond is Bittner to retire the side score at 5-3. No runs, one hit, one left, and after an inning and a half of play, 2-0 Whiskey Jacks on the official Wheat City Whiskey Jacks YouTube channel. Bottom of the second inning. Two nothing Whiskey Jacks is our score from Kraft Field, former home of the University of North Dakota baseball team. And a score update around the league. Suris Valley, a 6-2 lead over Hastings. And the Trappers, a 2-0 lead over Sioux Falls. Everything else still waiting to begin. Of course, my usual broadcast partner is sitting a couple seats to the right of me, that being Nate Rohrer, who, of course, taking the solo voice of the Fremont Moo gig tonight. Usually we split the innings. But if you're looking for the Moo broadcast, uh, you can find it on, our, on the Fremont Moo Twitter page. First pitch from Linder inside, almost hitting Houston Fogelstrom. 242 average, three homers, four, or 11 RBIs. He's 16 for 66, the 1 0 high, 2 and 0. So the Moo, yes, they're in a bit of a cold streak going from defending champs to first place for most of the first half. Now they've relinquished that lead to Western Nebraska as that one drops low, 3 and 0 on Fogelstrom. Vogelstrom, uh, Omaha North high school graduate, and that's ball four. So Houston Vogelstrom works a four-pitch walk, and Dawson Linder uncharacteristically wild. So Vogelstrom, the runner at first. Nobody out for the Lincoln native, Lincoln, Nebraska native, should I say, Garrett Olson. Second baseman from Arkansas State University, Olson. Batting in a crouched right-hand stance, 188, no home runs, two RBIs. 
righty to righty from Linder, swung on and missed on a fastball, 0-1. So the runner off first is Fogelstrom. Moo playing not much of a shift to any side. 0-1, Linder deals to the right-hander Olsen. The pitch is high and inside. I think that got him. Yes, it did. It hit him. So that just clipped Olsen on the shoulder. And Dawson Linder puts the first two guys on base. So now the number nine hitter, Trey Guajardo. Left-hand hitting Guajardo, playing center field today. Guajardo out of Chattanooga, or excuse me, St. Mary's University. The lefty, three for 15. Righty to lefty, advantage Guajardo. First pitch from Linder, outside, one and oh. One ball, no strikes, no outs, two nothing Whiskey Jacks. Zach Berman here on the mic for you all tonight. Here is the one oh. Linder deals to Guajardo. Pitch high and outside, two and oh, and Linder losing the strike zone early. Runner off second is Fogelstrom. Runner off Erse, or first is Olsen. St. Mary's will be the home of Guajardo starting next season. The 2-0, and the pitch from Linder swung on and popped a mile high. First base side, Howell fielding, looking, and makes the catch for out number one. Big out number one for the Moo. So the lineup resets, and now Linder's going to have to contend with the dangerous Caleb McDowell, who singled and scored his first time up. Now don't be fooled. McDowell, he's a catcher, and he's batting first. But he is quite talented, especially from that right-hand stance. There's a reason he's hitting leadoff. Runners off first and second. The first pitch to McDowell high for ball one. One and oh is the count on Caleb McDowell. At a Grandview University. McDowell batting 291, two homers, 13 RBIs. Runners off first and second. Fogelstrom and Guajardo the 0-1. High one and one. Actually, let's see what they call it. Yes, 2-0. and oh. So two balls, no strikes, and Shea Bennett walking out. And I'm sure that's not what he was looking for in terms of his starter. So 2-0, and oh, two on. Runner off first is Guajardo. Reached, or excuse me. Runner off first is Olsen, reached on a hit by pitch. Runner off second, Fogelstrom reached on a walk. So two balls, no strikes, one out, two nothing Whiskey Jacks. And another two score updates for you, Suris Valley. 7-2 lead now over Hastings and Pier has extended their lead as well, three nothing. Canyon County and Casper, that just Started from the state of Wyoming and Mining City in Western Nebraska live and rolling from gearing. Two balls, no strikes, one out as the conference is over on the mound. Linder deals to McDowell. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Hit in the air to right center field. That could be trouble. Back towards the gap is Morphew. He makes the catch. And both runners were going, thought it was going to wind out in the gap. So nobody advances. So Ethan Sitzman. Now up, he struck out his first time. Swinging. Two on, two out. Two nothing is our score. With the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks up on top of the defending Expedition League champion Fremont Moo. Dawson Linder. Not before time is called. We'll step up to the mound and take on the righty Sitzman. Sitzman 0 for 1. 
Here's the set and the delivery from Linder. High ball one. A lot of first pitch balls from Dawson Linder. Sitzman out of Whitman College. Whiskey Jacks two runs on three hits. Moo no runs, two hits. That one is popped in the air. Right field foul territory. White going over, over, and he leaps for it. I don't think he got it. Excuse me, that was Taylor Howell going after that foul ball. Count even at one apiece. Howell went all out for it. Tried to bring it back from foul territory. Off second, Fogelstrom off first, Guajardo. The 1-1, one, one. Linder deals to Sitzman. Here is the pitch. Drops just a bit too high for ball two on the breaking ball. So two balls and a strike advantage, Sitzman. Runner 180 feet away to get the third run of the game in for Wheat City. Here's the 2-1, swung on in line in a right center field. Morphew on his horse, he makes the catch to end the inning. So Wheat City strands two, but the Whiskey Jacks do maintain their 2-0 lead over the defending champion, Fremont Moo. Top of the third inning of play here from Craft Field in Grand Forks, North Dakota. 2-0 is our score. The Whiskey Jacks leading the Moo. 8-9-1 and one due up for Fremont. Webb, Sears, and Leaper. First pitch to Webb, high and outside, 1-0. and oh. Braden Webb, another Memphis kid. He is batting from the right-hand side, 2 for 17. Two RBIs for Webb. He's batting 117. 1-0 one -oh to Webb. Low for ball two. Just missing on the fastball. Braden Webb, native of Prosper, Texas. Pete Meyer, the 2-0 -oh to Webb. Inside and high. Three balls and a strike to Braden Webb. So Webb, Sears, and Morphew. Do up. Move had two hits. They haven't been able to do anything with them. Those are their only two base runners. 3 0 to Webb and the pitch. Dots the outside part of the plate in the fastball for strike number one. Three balls in a strike. Nobody out. Pete Meyer deals to. Right hand hitting Webb, and it's outside for ball four. Forced walk of the game for Braden Webb. And the Moo have another base runner. So if you're listening on the Wheat City YouTube stream, feel free to drop in on the chat where you are listening or watching from. Love to see where our Whiskey Jack fans are tuning in from tonight. So Dylan Sears in a bit of a slump, two for 21 in his last seven games, but typically a tough batter to take care of at the plate and that one misses high for ball one to Dylan Sears. Right hand contact hitter, not much of a power bat but always a threat to get on base and a threat to steal as well out of 
Westphalia, Iowa, student at Western Illinois. 1-0 is outside, 2-0 oh on Dylan Sears. His average 155 or 255, 11 for 43. One home run, five RBIs. And Sears, a smart, tough out. He can easily stretch in at bat, nine or 10 pitches. Runner goes, and that's popped in the air. Webb's got to get back, and it catch is made, and Webb is hung up. So that's a double play. Webb ran, I think he thought it was going way further than the infield. So a double play, a pop out double play. So erase the base runner. Three unassisted as it was caught by Jelly. And he stepped on the bag for the second out. So now Darian Morphew with the bases empty and two outs. And the first pitch to Morphew outside for ball one. The move typically so good on the base paths, a rare base running error. 1-0 to Morphew, who reached on a single his first time up. Pitches hit on the ground to get to uh, the second pitchman, Olsen, who flips and fires the first in time score at 4-3 to end the inning. So despite the leadoff single, or the leadoff walk, the move go 1-2-3. And after three or two and a half innings of play, still 2 nothing Whiskey Jacks. Bottom of the third inning here from uh, Grand Forks. Three, four, and five due up against Dawson Linder. The Whiskey Jacks, a two nothing lead on the move. Jake Jelly singled his first time up and scored. Powerful right hand hitter, one for one. First pitch from Linder, swung on and missed for strike one. Couldn't tell if the check swing went all the way through, but the count 0 and 1. No balls, one strike. Linder, the 0 1, and Jelly checks. They appeal to first. No, he didn't go around. So 1 and 1 the count on Jake Jelly. 338 average. One homer, 13 RBI. Righty to righty, the 1-1. One, one. Swung on and fouled right back over our heads. Count one and two. Now, we have a glass little box here behind home plate. And a foul ball straight back to us. I believe it is plexiglass. So it's not going to shatter and concuss anybody. But it's going to give you a little kind of jump scare. The 1-2 swing and a miss. So jellied out on strikes. Third strike out of the game for Linder, who seems to be settling down a little bit in the bottom of the third, and the batter is now Jackson Sorensen. He struck out his first time up. So yes, we have a plexiglass shield protecting us from the 
the infield. Of course, it is a turf infield grass outfield. Righty to lefty, the first pitch is in there for a called strike. Fastball outside corner on Sorensen 0 and 1. Jackson Sorensen out of Gonzaga University in Spokane. Of course, they came within a game of winning the national championship in the NCAA tournament. Sorensen sprays it foul towards the move, the move dugout, Hope. Everybody is okay, the count 0 and 2. Of course, Gonzaga, they were the number one overall seed going into March Madness, and they ran the table all the way to the Final Four, beat UCLA on that ridiculous Jalen Suggs buzzer beater as Sorensen hits it high in the air, deep center. Morphew back a couple steps in front of the warning track, makes the catch for out number two. So two quick outs for Linder. And now Owen Viano, who hit an RBI double his first time up, steps into the batter's box. Viano out of Boise, Idaho, takes a first pitch called strike on the breaking ball. Count 0 and 1. Now, Viano stands 6'3, 220, and the 0 1 is high. Count 1 and 1. One ball, one strike, two outs. Here's the pitch from Linder. And it's over the outside part of the plate, but called a ball, 2 and 0, or 2 and 1. Nobody on, two outs, the 2 1 pitch. And here's the pitch. Outside, 3 and 1. So two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Here's the 2 2. Over the outside part of the plate and called strike three. So that's the end of the inning. One, two, three, go the Whiskey Jacks. And after three innings of play, two nothing Wheat City on the official Wheat City Whiskey Jacks YouTube.
Welcome back. Sorry about the technical difficulties. The Moo did go down one, two, three in the top of the fourth inning. So we are in the bottom of the fourth, and our score has held it as two and nothing in favor of the Whiskey Jacks. Bittner, Fogelstrom, and Olsen, six, seven, and eight. First pitch is on the outside part of the plate for a called strike one to Dean Bittner. Bittner flew out his first time out off the Whiskey Jacks looking to turn their one win into a streak while the Moo are looking to avoid a four game losing streak. It says hit on the ground a leaper. He fields and fires across the diamond in time. Score 5-3 for out number one. Now, Houston Fogelstrom steps in. He walked his first time up and got as far as second base. Fogelstrom, the Omaha native, first pitch to him is swung on and missed. Now, of course, what is going on in Omaha right now? Why it's the College World Series, and I, of course, being based in Fremont, I was lucky enough to be able to make it down for the Vanderbilt North Carolina State game on Monday night. The 0-1 is on the outside part of the plate count one and one. So I can give you a score update on what is going on in Omaha today. As Stanford a 4-2 lead over Vandy in the top of the six, of course that's an elimination game. So the Commodores at risk of getting knocked out as it's lined a leaper, he fields and fires. Nice scoop by Howell to retire Fogelstrom scored 5-3 again, two gone for Wheat City in the bottom of the fourth. So yes, 4-2 Stanford. In the top of the sixth inning. And now the last chance here in the bottom of the fourth is Garrett Olsen, who was hit by a pitch his first time up. Checks doesn't go around, that's ball one. The 1-0. Linder deals, high and inside. 2-0. and Olsen, six for 33, 187, no home runs, two RBIs. We have not had a scorer in this game since the bottom of the first. A bunch of scoreless frames. That swung on a miss. Dawson Linder, after a rocky start in the first, he has been quite good since. Two and one is the count. And the delivery from Linder. Base is empty, two outs, two nothing. Wheat City pitches on the outside part of the plate, but just drifting away. Three and one is the count on Olsen. Should Olsen reach, Guajardo comes in. He reached on a, or he stepped on with a fly out and the pitch is outside for ball four. So Garrett Olsen draws a two out walk and the batter's retired streak for Linder ends at eight as Trey Guardo fouled to first his first time out. Right hand or left hand batter against the righty Linder. Sky has really begun to clear up here. Olsen three for five stealing. He's a threat to run. Lefty to lefty first, ready to lefty first pitch. Outside part of the plate on the breaking ball for strike one. No balls, one strike, two outs, two nothing. Whiskey Jacks. And the 0 1. Did he go around? No, he did not. One and one is the count. One ball, one strike, two outs. Olsen on first. Guajardo at the plate. Linder deals righty to lefty. Pitches swung on, hit in the air to center field. Morphew's going to have to charge in. Now goes back out to make the catch to end the inning. So the Whiskey Jacks strand a run, a runner. And after four innings of play, it is still 2 nothing Wheat City. You're watching Wheat City Whiskey Jacks baseball.
Top of the fifth inning of play from Grand Forks. Two nothing Wheat City. Our score between the Whiskey Jacks and the Fremont Moo. First pitch to Taylor Howell. Outside fastball called a strike. 0 and 1 is the count on Howell, who flew out his first time out. As Pete Meyer deals the 0 1, it's popped foul territory. Count quickly 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes, and nobody out here in the top for the fifth inning. The Moo looking to break the scoreless drought. The 0-2 is blooped into center. Coming on is Guajardo, gonna be a tough play. Slides and makes the catch! What a play by Trey Guajardo! A sliding grab as he charged in from center and robs Howell of a base hit, and there's one down. Nice catch by Guajardo. That's the first out of the inning. Top of the fifth inning, now Will Bush, who singled his first time up, takes the first pitch and hits it out into the right center field gap. Gonna be a tough play for Guajardo and he's gonna let it drop in front of him for a base hit. Bush chugging to second, the throw in, it's a good one and it's just late. So Bush, two for two with a double. And the move of a runner in scoring position, looking to capitalize. So Ryan Koski grounded into his, to a 5-3, his first time up, now as a runner on scoring position. Will Bush, that's his third hit of the season. Second double, he's got three hits, two doubles and a grand slam. Koski against the right-hander Pete Meyer. And it's inside and high for ball one. Yeah, I do beg your pardon, four for 11 is Bush. A single, two doubles and a grand slam. One and no to Koski, the Moo runner in scoring position looking to convert. Pete Meyer check second. checks second and delivers, and Koski swings and fouls it back, and that was the closest call we've had yet, as that one went right into the glass. And with that plexiglass, it almost feels, it has a hockey kind of vibe to it. If you're ever sitting up front at a hockey game and you get a puck flipped up towards you, it makes a sound that's gonna startle you. Not much wind, the American flag kind of dancing out and the wind looks like it's kind of blowing left. Can't tell 100%. Push, uh, Bush at second, 1-1. One, one. Pete Meyer deals to Koski. It swung on its foul right over us. Another headhunter. I feel like I should be wearing a helmet right here. One ball, two strikes, one outs. Runner off second. Will, is Will Bush who reached on the double. And the one two to Koski. Pete Meyer ready and deals. Outside, good eye by Ryan Koski. Two and two. Moo looking to get some runs across. Wheat City Whiskey Jacks looking to hold him. Would be a big win for this Whiskey Jack squad to notch one against the defending champs. The 2-2 pitch. Pete Meyer deals righty to righty and it's hit right up the middle and it's fielded by Garrett and it goes past his glove in a center field. Coming around and scoring his Bush. The throw gets past the catcher, McDowell. Let's see what they score it, but the move were on the board regardless and the Whiskey Jack lead has been trimmed to 2-1. to one as it went under the glove of Garrett Olson. And it went into right center field and Bush hustled home and it's a 2-1 ball game. So now, 
And they are going to score it an error, an E4. So now the move of the tying run at second. And the first pitch is over the inside part of the plate to Braden Webb, count 0-1. Webb drew a walk and then, of course, was out on the bases in that double play in the third. 2-1 Wheat City. Top of the fifth inning from Kraft Field. Got to have one of the most beautiful backdrops in all of the expedition league, these big, beautiful evergreen trees behind the outfield fence. Pitch is inside to Webb, count one and one. Ryan Koski off of second, like most of these Moo base runners. He can steal. But right now, the way the Moo have been scoring as opposed to the way they'd been scoring earlier in the season. They'll take him any way they can, as that one's fouled right back to me. Count is one and two on Braden Webb. Off of second is Koski, reached on the air. Koski calls time, now steps back in. Pete Meyer looks off second. Steps and delivers, and the pitch is down the heart of the plate. Called strike three, ring him up, sit him down as Webb goes down looking for out number two. So Dylan Sears, who popped into a double play, three unassisted his first time up, steps in. So Webb. So Webb strikes out after walking in the first pitch taken outside for a strike by Dylan Sears. Sears, of course, hit into that pop-out double play where Webb was caught off a of first. Righty to lefty, Pete Meyer deals to Sears. The 0-1, and that's swung on and missed. Count 0-2. Do up one, two, three for Wheat City should Sears retire. The righty Pete Meyer against the lefty Sears. Big at bat with the tying run 180 paces away. Here is the 0 2. Pete Meyer pauses and deals. Check swing. Did he go? Let's see if they call it. They're going to say he held up. It gets past McDowell. On the third goes Koski. So now. The tying run 90 feet away. So now one and two, runner off a third. One ball, two strikes. Two outs, the defending champs looking to knot it up. Be a big spot for Pete Meyer to get Sears to strike out to end the frame. The one, two from Pete Meyer, he deals. Inside, two and two. Nice block there by McDowell to keep it from going home. Sears is a tough cookie at the plate. Does not swing it much outside of the zone. He will make you work. Ronnie Pete Meyer looking to retire. Dylan Sears, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's the two, two. And it just misses outside. Sears holding back and the count goes full. And like I said, Sears, so difficult to strike out. As he works his way back from 0-2. Full count, here's the 3-2 pitch. Pete Meyer ready and deals. And it's low in the dirt for ball four. So Dylan Sears fights his way back from down 0-2 to draw the walk. And Pete Meyer has walked his second batter aboard. Sears a threat to steal. And the ever dangerous Darian Morphew. One for two, single and a 4-3 ground out. He was caught stealing after reaching on that single. Go ahead run at first, tying run at third. First pitch is a pitch out for ball one. Sears represents the go ahead run. And Morphew represents a nice piece of insurance for the Moo. You'd like to see Pete Meyer regain his control here. 
Pete Meyer, 1-0. Pitch low and just missing, 2-0. Pete Meyer seeming to battle his control right now. So now Morphew, once again, another very disciplined hitter. He's not going to swing at anything unless he really likes it. 2-0, here's the pitch to Morphew. He swings at it, hits in the air to center, and right at Guajardo, and the Whiskey Jacks get out of the inning. Fremont does play to run, but Ronnie Peetmeyer strands two, and after four and a half, it's still 2-1 Whiskey Jacks on the official YouTube page for the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Bottom of the fifth inning, the shutout is broken as the Moo finally scratch across a run. But Wheat City still leads 2-1. 1-2-3, McDowell, Sitzman, and Jelly. First pitch from Linder is up high. McDowell singled and flew out his first time, first two times up. 1-0 to McDowell and Linder deals. Swung on and fouled straight back at us. My goodness, even though you got the glass here, you got to keep your head on a swivel. I'm sure my typical broadcast partner, Nate Rohrer, is over to my right, probably laughing at me, jumping all over the place. The 1-1 one, one drops in for ball number two. One ball, or two balls, one strike. And here's the 2-1. Misses the outside part of the plate. Three and one. McDowell would be a nice base runner to start this bottom of the fifth for the Whiskey Jacks. Three one. Linder deals to McDowell. High ball four. And the Whiskey Jacks have a runner on to start the bottom of the fifth. Second time reaching for McDowell. He did score his first time up. And now Ethan Sitzman looking to break his 0 for 2. Sitzman struck out and flew out in his first two plate appearances against Dawson Linder. For Wheat City, two runs, three hits, and an error. For the Moo, one run, three hits, and no errors. Runner off first is McDowell. Sitzman against Linder, righty to righty first pitch is inside, ball one. One and zero. The pitch is over the outside part of the plate for strike one. One and one is the count. With the move trailing two one to Wheat City, we're looking to defeat the defending champs. One one inside and ducking away is Sitzman two and one. Score updates from the rest of the Expedition League: Mining City in Western Nebraska. Tied at one in the top of the third. And two one inside, three and one. So a chance for the first two base runners to reach for the Whiskey Jacks. As Linder's control going in and out. 
We do have a Moo pitcher working his way to the bullpen. I cannot tell you who it is. 3-1, high ball four, and the first two Wheat City runners are on. So first and second, and nobody out for the dangerous Jake Jelly as the pitcher making his way back to the bullpen for the move is Levi Kiyuchi, number 13 in purple. So nobody on, or nobody out and two on for Jelly. Struck out his last time up, but singled and scored his first time up. Jake Jelly, of course, a teammate of Brock Reller out in right field. First pitch to Jelly from Linder, and it's a breaking ball that he loses. Ball one. Linder definitely fighting his control now. One and zero, oh, double play ball in effect. The one zero to Jelly, swung on and popped in the air. He just got under it. Going to be a tough play. Who's got it? And calling off Sears is Koski to make the catch. It was an inside fastball, and Jelly just missed it for out one. So now Sorensen, 0 for 2. And it would be a nightmare scenario for Wheat City to hit into a double play. Linder's still not up to 80 pitches yet, so it's up to the Whiskey Jacks to get that pitch count up and get a couple runs in. First pitch is hit high in the air to center by Sorensen, right at Morphew who makes the catch, tagging and holding up is McDowell for out number two. So two flyouts, and they have been the best friend of Dawson Linder, worst enemy of the Whiskey Jacks, as the Wheat City Bats have just missed a couple of them. Owen Viano, RBI double and a strikeout, that's his two. Boise, Idaho natives and he plays at Umpaqua Community College in Oregon. Runner off first is McDow or McDowell off second, Sitzman at first, first pitch over the outside part of a plate. Strike one to Viano. Owen Viano does have that RBI. The 0-1 from Linder, righty to righty, here's the pitch. Swung on and missed, high breaking ball. Count 2-0 on Owen Viano. So Linder one pitch away from getting out of this after walking the first two on. Big spot here for Owen Viano, let's see if he can recover. The 0-2 pitch from Linder, outside, one and two. For Viano. He's got McDowell off second, Sitzman off first. Both reached on walks. Viano looking to get the Whiskey Jack some insurance. The one two pitch, swung on and missed. Foul tipped into the glove of Will Bush to retire the side, and the Whiskey Jack strand two. And after five innings of play, the Whiskey Jack still lead the move, two to one.
Top of the sixth inning of play. Whiskey Jacks clinging to a 2-1 lead over the Moo. I'm Zach Berman here for these next three games. Of course, a doubleheader tomorrow. First pitch, 5.05 Central Standard. And first pitch of game two, 30 minutes after that. Pete Meyer in a sixth inning of work and he gives up a ground ball off the glove of Jelly. And it's gonna be, I believe, a leadoff base hit for Peyton Leeper. Jelly tried to backhand it, hit the heel of his glove and went straight up in the air. Maybe that turf infield comes into play there. So an infield single for Leeper who was 0 for 2 up into that point. Leeper a threat to run, tying run on base, go ahead run at the plate with Luke White. Fouled out to first and flew out. First pitch to White and it's spiked. Leeper goes to second, setting and firing for McDowell and it's high. Leeper goes to third and he will get in there easily. So let's see what they score it, but Leeper moves all the way from first to third and a fly ball from White could tie the game. Wild pitch and an error, I would think. The error, of course, coming on the throw. First throwing error of the year on the usually rock solid Caleb McDowell. 1-0 to Luke White. Pete Meyer deals to the righty White and that's swung on and popped in the air. Foul territory out towards the Moo dugout. Detner watches it land. Count one and one. One ball, one strike, nobody out. The Moo threatening to tie. As the Whiskey Jacks, they've been up two zips since the sixth, but or since the first, but here in the sixth, Ronnie Peepmeyer in jeopardy of giving that up. The one one, Peepmeyer deals and White chops it foul down the first base side. Count one and two on Luke White. Brock Reller who missed a home run by not that much in the on deck circle. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Pete Meyer, and it's outside and stabbed by McDowell. And very easily, Leeper could have come home. Pete Meyer, that's only pitch number 70 for him. He has been very good, especially against this difficult Moo lineup. Only one run on four hits thus far, but they're threatening. The 2-2 two -two is chopped up the middle and threw for a base hit. So the Moo tie the game on an RBI single from Luke White. Single, single tie ball game as White, his eighth RBI of the year. And this is a brand new ball game here in the top of the six. It's 2-2 two -two and not the situation you don't want to be in with the dangerous Grand Forks native Brock Reller. Up at the play, 0 for 2 looking to continue his hit streak. Righty to lefty, first pitch to Reller, swing and a miss. And boy, he was thinking about hitting that up to Thief River Falls. Now, Reller, of course, growing up here. Wonder how many games he's played here in this ballpark over the course of maybe his high school career. The 0-1 and Reller swings and lines it in the left field and that's gonna be caught by Viano for out number one. So Reller 0 for three. But this game, of course, is tied. The Moose scoring their two runs on a on an error. And then an RBI single by Luke White. So the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, two runs in their first inning. But the Moo run in the fifth, run in the sixth. Now Taylor Howell out of Memphis. Looking to break his 0 for 2. First pitch to Howell. Swung on and lined in a left field for a base hit. Past the diving glove of... The third baseman, Dean Bittner. Third hit of the inning for the Moo. Two on, one out. And Will Bush, who has been Mr. Clutch as of late. Single and a double, he has scored a run. Can give the Moo the lead, go ahead run at second with White. The Moo have done this. They've come back several times this season. There's a reason they're 16 and six. Pete Meyer deals the one one righty to righty. First pitch drops in for ball one, just missing. Scoreboard update, Mining City in Western Nebraska. 
3-1 Tommyknockers in the bottom of the third. That is huge if you're a Moo fan. The two, two the one ball pitch is outside 2-0. So of course the Moo were in first for such a long stretch, but now chasing Western Nebraska, they're down two games in the standings. Of course the first half of the season over July 1st before the Moo head up to Suras Valley. The 2-0 with runners on first and second, and Howell swings and flies it deep to right center. Guajardo coming in, makes the catch in right center, tagging and getting over to third is Luke White. So now runners on the corners with two outs. So Howell pushes a runner over but flies out. And now, or excuse me, that was Bush that flew out. So Ryan Koski reached on an error and was stranded at third, but that did result in a run getting scored. Koski, a good hitter with runners in the corners and two outs, and Pete Meyer looking to escape this inning with the score still deadlocked at two. First pitch to Koski, and Koski hits it high in the air right field and right at the right fielder, Fogelstrom, to make the catch to end the inning, but the move tie the game thanks to three base hits, and after five and a half innings of play, you're listening to Whiskey Wheat, Whiskey Jack Baseball on the official YouTube of the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Bottom of the sixth inning here from Wheat City. Or we are not in Wheat City. We are in Grand Forks, Wheat City, about four hours and a passport check north in Brandon, Manitoba. Just a temporary home for the Whiskey Jacks here at Craft Field. Bittner, Fogelstrom, and Olsen, 6, 7, and 8 against Dawson Linder. He's thrown 83 pitches. That's pitch number 84, and it's popped up by Bittner. Right side of foul territory. Howell under it makes the catch for out number one. One pitch, one out, and Linder, who struggled so mightily in the bottom of the first inning, has rebounded since then. And the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks have just not been able to catch up to him. So Houston Fogelstrom, who walked and grounded into a 5-3 his first time up, batting for the right-hand side against the righty, Linder. Dawson Linder deals first pitch, swung on and missed. A high fastball count 0-1, and, and Linder really dialing it up. One out, nobody on. Linder at the belt, readies and deals. Fogelstrom takes a fastball, called strike two. 0-2 oh on Houston Fogelstrom. Dawson Linder has not allowed a hit in a long time. Not since the double by Viano. 0 2 is high for ball number one. So that, so that RBI double by Owen Viano in the bottom of the first was the last hit 
allowed. One out, nobody on. Here's the one two from Linder. Low by a bit. Two and two, nice job holding up by Fogelstrom. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Game tied at two, nobody on the base pass. I'm Zach Berman here with the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks for the next two games after tonight. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and fouled right back at us again. <laughs> oh my goodness. You see something coming for you and your life flashes before your eyes. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Linder to Fogelstrom who's battling. Here's the 2-2. And that is called strike three on the outside corner. Nice pitch by Linder and Fogelstrom couldn't do anything about it. Strikeout number six for Dawson Linder who is doing exactly what Coach Shea Bennett needed him to do. And Garrett Olson who has reached both times on a hit by pitch and a, and a walk due up. Righty to righty, Linder looking to get a one, two, three, sixth. First pitch to Olsen, swung on and popped in the air over our heads. That's strike one. Garrett Olson out of Lincoln Southeast High School. The 0-1 to Olsen. From Dawson Linder, the base is empty. Two outs, the score tied at two. Here's the pitch, and it's high for ball one. So 2-2 two, two is our score between the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks looking to improve their record to 10-13, and 13, and the Fremont Moo looking to snap a three-game losing streak. The 1-1 one, one to Linder from Linder, and Olsen pokes it foul, count one and two. And the Whiskey Jacks bats, after being so good to start the frame, have just gone down quietly since. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Here's the pitch from Linder to Garrett Olson. Trey Guajardo on deck, should Olson reach. Here's a one-two. Outside, nice stab by Bush because that was coming right at my forehead should he not make that catch. So now two balls, two strikes, two outs. Game tied at two in the bottom of the sixth. Linder to Olsen. Righty to righty. Big pitch incoming. Linder readies and deals. Pitch is hit high in the air to left. That's going to drop into the glove of Ryan Koski in left field. And one, two, three, go the Whiskey Jacks after six. We are tied at two between the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks and the Fremont Moo, and you are watching Wheat City Whiskey Jack Baseball on the official Whiskey Jack YouTube channel. Linder's a bad man. Linder is a bad So we don't know. Is this his first start? First appearance? What school did he go to? Southern Jag. Is he a local?
New pitcher in for the Whiskey Jacks in the top of the seventh inning. It is Ryan Raidman, uh, native of Palmdale, California, and he is planning on attending Gonzaga University after his stint with the Whiskey Jacks. This is his first start in the ex first appearance in the Expedition League. Ryan Raidman, he's a lefty in against Webb Sears and Morphune. Eight, nine, and one. Our score is 2-2. Two, two. First pitch outside, ball one. Whiskey Jacks scored two in the first and have gone down quietly since the move. Slowly but surely tied the game up as Webb hits it on the ground. Diving, stopped by, by Sitzman. He throws to first in time. What a play. Ethan Sitzman went to a knee, stabbed it, and threw across his body in time. Scored 6-3. What a play by Ethan Sitzman. For out number one. To get the speedy Braden Webb out. So now Dylan Sears, who walked his last time up. After popping into a double play. First pitch from Sitzman, or from Reedman. And it hits the inside corner of the plate for a call. It's strike one. So I'll get you our stat line on... Pete Meyer as Sears takes ball one low. Pete Meyer went six innings, allowed six hits, two runs, both earned, two or three strikeouts, two walks. So a good start for Pete Meyer, but he isn't in line for a decision because of the tie ball game. One one pitch, swung on and missed, and Reedman looking good thus far. Count one and two on on Dylan Sears. The one-two pitch from Reedman. Swung on it high in the air, deep right field. Back goes Fogelstrom on the track, makes the catch. A little scare there, but that's out number two. Lineup flips over, and now Darian Morphew, one for three. Darian Morphew singled, grounded out, and flew out. Lefty to lefty, first pitch to Morphew and it hops the plate and the catcher's glove, one and oh. Ryan Reedman making his first appearance with the Whiskey Jacks, first ball outside two and oh. So I can get you his high school stats out of Palmdale, California, Los Angeles area native. The 2-0 drops in for a called strike one. The lights have turned on. Went to Quartz Hill High School, weighs 190, stands at 5'11". That's in the dirt, three and one. Three balls, one strike. He was a two-sport athlete at Quartz Hill. He played football as well. Career 205 ERA. 3-1 in the dirt, ball four, and Morphew works a five-pitch walk. So about Reedman, number 50 ranked pitcher in all of California. Not bad considering how many pitchers come out of that state. 205 ERA, eight wins, 41 innings pitch, 75 strikeouts, and an on-base percentage of 132. Not bad, of course. There's a bit of a difference between Expedition League kids and high school kids. First pitch outside to Leeper, 1-0. Peyton Leeper, a switch hitter, batting righty for the first time today. One for three, fly out. Strikeout and single. Runner off first, the dangerous Morphew, who was caught stealing. The 1-0, drops in, strike one. Ryan Reedman looking to escape his first inning as a Whiskey Jack scoreless. Morphew at first, two outs, tie game at two. Reedman deals to Leeper, and the pitch is taken over the outside part of the plate for a call, strike two. Reedman looking to get his first strikeout as a Whiskey Jack. And it would come in a big spot. Oh, if he could just extend this inning to hand it off to Luke White. 
the one two. Reedman deals and it's nudged foul into the stands. We go two and two. Leaper not an easy out. Move have left five on, two runs and six hits. Two, three and two for Wheat City. They've left six on. Big pitch incoming, one, two from Ryan Reedman to Peyton Leeper. Here's the delivery. Pitch is swung on and hit in the air to right field. That could be trouble. Coming in Fogelstrom, it drops in front of him for a base hit. Coming around third and holding up there is Morphew. It's a single the other way for Peyton Leeper. And they have runners on the corners, two outs for the dangerous Luke White. And here's where putting in a lefty becomes a problem because Luke White is a big, scary right-hand power bat. So Morphew works the walk and gets over to third. He's 90 feet away from being the go-ahead run for the Moo. Can Reeveman get out the dangerous White? First pitch fouled off. White the DH in tonight's contest. RBI single up the middle. He tied the game. Definitely a challenge for Reeveman coming out of high school and having to face one of the more dangerous right hand batters in the Expedition League in his first plate appearance in a high leverage situation. The 1 0 and it's in the dirt for ball one. Nice block by McDowell. 1 and 1. Runners on the corners. Leaper off of third. Or Leaper off of first. Morphew off of third. The 1 1. Big pitch incoming. Here's the 1-1 one, one to White. Swung on and missed. Count one and two, excuse me, he foul tipped it. And Reeveman displaying some nice stuff on that curveball. Maybe he goes back to it. One and two to Luke White. Dangerous right hand slugger out of Memphis University. Runners on the corners, two outs. Reeveman deals, runner goes, the pitch is swung on and missed. Ryan Reeveman gets Luke White to swing at a low curveball. And after six and a half innings of play, the Moose Strand two, Reeveman works a scoreless top of the seventh. We head to the stretch. It's a 2-2 ball game here on the official YouTube channel of the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. <laughs> Say hopefully that's Jeff Hoffpower. <laughs> All right, let's go. The seventh inning has been stretched. New pitcher in for the Moo. It is Levi Kiyuchi out of Tacoma Community College, a Puyallup, Washington native. Seattle metropolitan area kid. And he's going to have to... Deal with Guajardo, McDonald, and Sitzman. 2-2 two, two our score in the bottom of the seventh. Trey Guajardo, 0 for 2, but he's made his presence felt in the field. Making a sliding catch earlier in the game, Guajardo. 
in to face Kiyuchi. No record of 540 ERA. So the stat line on Linder before Kiyuchi's fifth appearance. Six innings, four hits, two runs, both of them earned. Three walks and six strikeouts. Moo got everything they could have asked for out of Linder after that first inning. Guajardo to lead off against Kiyuchi. First pitch outside for ball one. Guajardo, like I said, 0 for 2. A 1 0. Called strike one. Count even at one apiece. A 1 1 pitch. To, Guajar from, to, to Guajardo and it's chopped weakly. Let's see if there's gonna be a play. Fielding and firing is Howell and it's away from the pitcher Kiyuchi going a second is the speedy Guajardo. He slides in face first. Let's see what they score it. It might be an infield single and an error on the throwaway. And the go ahead run 180 feet away. And the lineup flips over to Caleb McDowell who is the one guy you want up in this spot. Big spot for McDowell against the right-handed Kiyuchi. Runner off second is Guajardo. He's a threat to steal. I'm waiting on the scoring decision from that. I think it's going to be an error pitch. Swung on and hit to short. Fielding and firing is seal. And it gets off the glove of Howell, who now fields and fires to third. Not in time. So Guajardo is safe. And McDowell is safe as well. So Fremont's defense, which has been pretty good in the infield, faltering here and runners on the corners. And Ethan Sitzman now has runners on the corners and nobody out. Infield single plus an error on Howell to throw. First pitch is fouled back by Sitzman. Count 0-1. So Sitzman, Jelly, and Sorensen do up with runners on the corners and nobody out. The 0-1. High, ball one. Guajardo off third. McDowell off first. Big spot for the Whiskey Jacks as they look to take the lead on the defending champs. Kiyuchi is ready and deals, and it's way high, slipped out of his hand. Two and one. Kiyuchi has not pitched since the Pier series. Two balls, one strike. Kiyuchi deals, runner goes, pitch fouled back. Moo got lucky there as McDowell would have been safe, count two and two. Saltzman, or Sitzman, struck out, flew out, and walked in his three plate appearances. The set, and here is the pitch from Kiyuchi, and he checks back on first. Low throw, Howell handling it. And the count will go. Two and two, two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Here's a two, two, and it's swung on and hit high in the air, foul down the right field line. We stay two and two. Sitzman battling big time here. With a runner off third, 90 feet away from the lead is Guajardo. Kiyuchi versus Sitzman. Two, two pitch, righty to righties. Kiyuchi ready and deals, and it's pop foul again. Runner win again. And both times there, the Moo are getting lucky because that would have been a successful stolen base as McDowell was getting jump after jump after jump. The 2-2 pitch again from Kiyuchi. He deals. 
to Sitzman. Runners on the corners. Here's the 2-2. Swung on and fouled. Oh, it's a headhunter towards the Whiskey Jack dugout. Bats is in and out, thankfully missing everybody. We stay 2-2, two and two, and this is turning into a marathon of an at-bat. Off of third, Guajardo. Off of first, McDowell. Here is the 2-2. Two -two. Kiyuchi is ready. He deals. And it drops just high. What a job by Sitzman to hold back. Bush thought it had dropped into the strike zone. Up says not so fast. Full count, big payoff pitching coming. Pitch number nine of the at bat. Kiyuchi deals to Sitzman, and it's low and away for ball four, and the bases are locked, loaded, and ready to fire on command with nobody out in the bottom of the seventh. And the dangerous Jake Jelly could unload him on one swing. Jelly, one for three. You just got to get at least one out of this. Jelly. Big right hand hitting slugger against the righty Kiyuchi. First pitch from Kiyuchi to Jake Jelly. Here it comes. Swung on it high in the air, down the left field line, into the corner. It's going to hook foul. It had the distance to clear the fence for a grand slam, but he missed it by an inch. So a long, loud 0 and 1. Oh boy, Jelly just a little bit early on it. Guajardo off first, McDowell off second, and Sitzman off first. 0-1 oh, to Jake Jelly. Kiyuchi deals righty to righty. Here it comes, and it's low and away for ball one. So Jake Jelly took that first pitch and swung just a snap of a second early. He's a little later. That's maybe off the foul pole and left. 1-1, one, one, bases loaded, nobody out, bottom of the seventh. Kiyuchi deals to Jelly, and it's up high, 2-1. Two and one. Two balls and a strike. The at bat in Jelly's favor. Bases loaded. Outfield shading to pull. The 2 1. Let's see what Kiyuchi throws him. Here it comes. Swung on and chopped to short. Sears charges. He's just going to go to first. A run scores. And the Whiskey Jacks have the lead back as Qu Trey Guajardo scores on the fielder's choice. Both other runners advance. And Jelly out at first. And the Whiskey Jacks lead 3-2. to two. So Jelly gets the job done as Moo coach Shea Bennett will come to the mound and talk things over. We will see if there is a pitching change, but Sorensen 0 for 3, so you might want to. See what happens. What do they do? And they're going to keep Kiyuchi in. So Kiyuchi with runners off second and third. Here is Sorensen, 0 for 3, a strikeout swinging in the first, and then a couple of fly balls to center. Comes up with another drive to center. So let's see. Sorensen, 0 for 3. Left hand batter against the riding Kiyuchi. McDowell at third, six minutes, second, one out, a run in the center. The set. And the first pitch to Sorensen swung on and missed. He was swinging for the fences. Count 0 and 1. The 0 1. Here's the pitch, and it's over the heart of the plate for strike two. It's 
No balls, two strikes, runners on the corners. Or runners off second and third. Here's the 0-2 and it's pop foul. No balls, two strikes, a big spot. The Whiskey Jacks already pushed one across. The 0-2, dealing to Sorensen is Kiyuchi. Runners off second and third. Here's the 0-2. That's over the heart of the plate for, no, they don't call it. So ball one, Sorensen thought he was out. The one two. Here's the pitch, and it's high, two and two. Nice job by Sorensen to battle back. So Kiyuchi had those two pitches to work with. Sorensen was not tempted by either. Here is the two two. The pitch from Kiyuchi swung on and missed. And Kiyuchi rears back and lets a fastball fly. And now Owen Viano, the last man standing here in the bottom of the seventh. A big inning, though, for the Whiskey Jacks. An RBI double to left by Viano was the second run of the game for Wheat City. He's been quiet since then. Two strikeouts. Second and third, two strikeouts. First pitch is swung on and fouled into the netting. 1-0. Oh. Strike one, 0-1 oh one, one count to Owen Viano. 0-1 oh to Viano. Kiyuchi deals righty to righty to Viano. High and inside. 1-1. One and one. Kiyuchi deals to Viano. Runners off second and third. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Outside, just missing, two and one. Here's a 2-1, swung on and grounded through the left field side for a base hit. One run scores McDowell. They're gonna hold up Sitzman. It's an RBI single for Owen Viano and a big insurance run for the Whiskey Jacks. They lead four to two. Viano gets a ground ball to go through the left field side. Wow. And the Whiskey Jacks back up by two against the defending champs. So now, Bittner with runners on the corners. He's 0 for 3, first pitch outside, 1 and 0. Sitzman at third, Viano at first, the 1 0. To Bittner, Kiyuchi ready, he has relinquished the lead. Here's the pitch, check swing, did he go? Pitch high, and the throw to second by Bush. Not in time, Viano stealing second. Runner at, th runner at third, Sitzman stays there. I'm surprised he didn't go. So two and oh, Kiyuchi doesn't have much command. Two balls, no strikes, two outs, the pitch to Bittner. From the righty Kiyuchi, here it is, a 2-0 swung on and chopped foul. Count two and one. Moo in danger of going on a four game losing streak. Kiyuchi deals to Bittner. 2-1 in the dirt, 3-1. And these Whiskey Jacks have been so disciplined at the plate in this bottom of the seventh, they are not swinging at anything unless they make Kiyuchi throw one down the gut. And he might have to throw one down the gut here. 
three balls, two strikes, runners off second and third, two runs already in. Kiyuchi, righty to righty, the pitch to Bittner. Here it comes, and it's outside corner. What a pitch, 3-2. Three, Full count to Dean Bittner. No home runs, eight RBIs, he's 0 for three. Runners off second and third, two outs, full count. Here we go, the 3-2 pitch, and it's hit in the air to left field. That is deep, back goes Koski, and it's over his head and up against the wall. Scoring is Sitzman, scoring is Viano. It's a two-run double for Dean Bittner, and it's a 6-2 lead for the Whiskey Jacks. A huge clutch hit for Dean Bittner. He got one he liked. He made Kiyuchi throw him a strike and he planted it off the wall and left. How do you like that? A four spot in the seventh inning. And Fremont in danger of dropping their fourth straight game now. So Fogelstrom now a runner on second. He can break this wide open. Struck out looking his last time up. First pitch is popped in the air. Foul territory, it will go foul count 0-1. So Kiyuchi comes in and... Runner off second is Bittner, the 0-1 in the dirt, 1-1. and The 1-1, one, one. swung on a hit in the air to left field. Will that drop? No, it will not. Is Koski, yes it does! It goes off the sliding glove of Koski. Scoring easily is Bittner. And all of a sudden it's a 7-2 lead and the wheels are coming off the moo here. Oh boy, a five run seventh inning and it's 7-2 Wheat City. So they're gonna call it an RBI single. It looked like Koski had a beat on it and all of a sudden he went down and the ball bounced in front of him. Wheat City batting around in the bottom of the seventh and Kiyuchi checking off of... 7-2, a five run seventh inning. Garrett Olson now up. And he swings and chops it to third, Leaper. Fields and just goes to second for the out, but the damage has been done. Wheat City, a five run seventh inning. And after seven innings of play, it is seven to two Whiskey Jacks. So how about that as we head to the eighth, a 7-2 lead for the Whiskey Jacks. 
a five run seventh inning out. It's Brock Reller in against Ryan Redman, Redman. And the count one and one. So one and one is a count on Brock Reller, who is in danger of losing his big hitting streak, and Reller takes that one low. Two and one to Brock Reller. The two one to Brock Reller, and it hits him. So a leadoff base runner from Redmond. And Reller trots over to first, and the Moo have some life. So Howell won for three. Power hitting first baseman. And the pitch is away and Reller, not the fastest runner, holds up as McDowell lets it go away. Ryan Redman losing his control a little bit and despite being down five, you don't wanna give the Moo life. They can hit and they can hit for a lot. The 1 0, and it's in the dirt again. That's 2 0. So, two balls, no strikes. And I don't think Howell's going to be swinging at anything unless he loves it. With Will Bush on deck, who's been so good. 2 0 is a count on Howell. Here's the pitch, and it gets away again from McDowell. Reller stays put. As none of them have gotten far away from the plate, McDowell goes out to talk to Ryan Redman. Reedman, excuse me. Don't know if you want to throw Howell a strike. Maybe he gets the green light on 3-0. Three, oh. three balls in a strike, three balls, no strikes. Nobody out. And Brock Reller off of first with a with Taylor Howell at the plate looking to start stringing together a rally. 3-0 count to Howell, here's the pitch and it's in the dirt, ball four. So the Moo have the first two base runners on. But of course, when Badlands played Fremont over the weekend, the Moo were struggling to get runners back with scoring position. So Will Bush, Fly to center his last time up after going two for two to start the game. First pitch to Bush, righty to righty, and that goes low, and this time both runners will advance. I think it hit the home plate umpire. Hope he's okay. Umpire calls time. As the umpire is going to get checked on. Hope he is okay. I don't, couldn't tell where it hit him. It's like it got him right in the stomach. Hopefully he is okay. Looks like it just knocked the wind out of him. The baseball, the stomach, not a fun feeling. And you don't have much padding there. So Reedman has been wild and then some. And as big of a 7-2 lead it is that is evaporate that could evaporate in a split second so it looks like the home plate blue is okay thankfully he seems to have a smile on his face so just maybe a post game ice pack for home plate blue and so often going but will bush on with a 1 0 count. Talented Moo catcher. Lefty to righty. A huge spot for Will Bush. Reedman deals, and that one is in the dirt as well. Reedman throwing everything into the dirt. 
and the last nine pitches from Reedman have all been balls. And they've all been in the dirt except for the one that hit Reller. The 2-0 pitch from Reedman. Here it is. That's in the dirt too. Ten straight balls from Reedman. 3-0 count as Reedman is just struggling to get it up as everything is getting bounced. Hopefully Reedman can settle things down here. 3-0. Let's see if he gets to throw a strike here. The 3-0. And that is dropping in for a strike. Nice pitch by Reedman. 3-1. Second and third, nobody out in the moo. Down five, threatening to climb back in. They have six outs to go. Big spot here. Three one pitch. Reedman deals, and that's ripped down the left field line. He got the pitch he liked. He was a bit early. So that count goes full. And now Reedman's in a spot where he could maybe get a strikeout after throwing nine straight balls. Reedman has recovered and gotten two strikes. And Will Bush now sitting in a full count, runners second and third, that being Reller and Howell reaching on a hit by pitch and a walk. The three, two pitch, big one coming from Reedman. It's swung on in line through the left field side, it's a base hit. Scoring is Reller and holding up at third is Howell. So runners on the corners now and a run in. It's seven to three, an RBI single for Will Bush's second RBI of the game. Excuse me, that's his first RBI of the game, my bad. And now nobody out for Ryan Koski. And a big, difficult spot for Reedman, as now he's got to deal with the next two hitters being righties. So a possible rally for the Moo and Reedman, let's see how much longer of a leash he has for Coach Laughlin. First pitch is on the outside, no ball one. Koski, 0 for three, but he did reach on an error that scored a run. 7-3 Wheat City, they're looking to defeat the defending champion Fremont Moo, 1-0. Swing and a miss. Nice recovery pitch there by Reedman. Strike one. One ball, one strike, nobody out. McDowell is trying to set a target. Belt higher, belt higher, higher. Let's see if the Moo hitters pick up on that. The 1-1 one, one is swung on and popped foul by Koski. Count one and two on Ryan Koski. Some tense moments here despite Wheat City going up big in the seventh. One run already in. Two runners on base. And this dangerous Fremont Moo team is only a couple swings away from turning a deficit into a lead. One, two. Outside, two and two. High and away. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Ryan Reedman, the Gonzaga commit, fighting uh, fighting it a little bit here in the eighth. Two, two to Koski, runners off the corners. Here is the pitch. And he swings and misses. A big strikeout for Ryan, Rid for Ryan Riddeman. Or Reedman, excuse me, and that's out number one. So one out in the top of the eighth, Ryan Reedman. Now as to contend with Braden Webb, batting from the left-hand side, first pitch to Webb. Inside high, but called. Strike one. Runners on the corner still, one out. 7-3 Whiskey Jacks. It's been a fun one today from Craft Field. Reedman ready. Deals to Webb. The 0-1. Outside. Just missing. 1-1. One one. 
Dylan Sears is on deck. If Webb were to reach, tying run is Dylan Sears. Not a known grand slam threat, but you know, you never know. It's baseball. Runner off first is Howell. Runner off first. Runner off third is Howell. Runner off first is Bush. The 1-1 one, one is swung on and hit right on the ground. One. There is not in time. Almost turning the 6-4-3. Sitzman to Garrett Olsen to Jelly. But a run scores. So it is 7-4. So it's seven of four as the Moo getting two to cross, but now a runner off first. Call it a fielder's choice and a six four out. First pitch to Sears in the dirt from Reedeman in the dirt. Now Sears does not swing at much of anything. And against a pitcher like Reedeman that struggled his control, you begin to get concerned that Sears could battle his way to a walk and then get the tying run on the plate and Morphew. 1 and 0 off first is Webb, and that's low 2 and 0 from Reedeman. Ryan Reedeman, the Palmdale, California native, he's battled his control here in the top of the eighth inning. Two have crossed. The move have done a little bit of work to close the gap. 2 0 count incoming. Read him and deals lefty to lefty. High, 3 and 0. Oh. Three balls, no strikes to Dylan Sears. And if you walk Dylan Sears, you have to contend with the dangerous Darian Morphew. 3 0 count. Read him and is ready. Sears expecting him to take a pitch here, and he does for ball four. So the move of the tying run at the plate as Sears works a walk. Webb and Sears both threats to run and Morphew, the, the talented lefty bat, who's already reached twice, could do some big time damage here to either close the gap or tie the game entirely. Webb off second, Sears at first. Should Morphew reach, the go-ahead run becomes Peyton Leeper. First pitch from Reedeman. And swinging and chopping at foul as Morphew count 0-1. If your heart is not racing right now, man, oh man, this has been a good game. And a big statement inning in the bottom of the seventh from the Whiskey Jacks. And you got to feel good if you're a Wheat City fan, but Ryan Reedeman has run into some trouble here in the eighth. 0-1 to Morphew, runners off first and second. Here's the pitch, Morphew swings and hits it on the ground, could be a tough play. Fielding and firing is Olsen in time to get Morphew to retire the side. So the move get two, but that's it. And after seven and a half innings of play, it is seven of four Whiskey Jacks.
New pitcher on the mound for the Moo, it is Trent Sellers. And if Moo fans, if you're listening and you recognize that name, that's because Sellers got ejected his last time up after arguing balls and strikes in the Badlands series. Sellers now in against 9-1-2, and two, first pitch to Guajardo inside for ball one. 9-1-2, and two, Guajardo, McDowell, and Sitzman. 1-0. From Guajardo, here's to Guajardo, and it's inside 2-0. and and The Moo pitchers have looked rusty, for lack of a better term. Sellers has been good. Here's the 2-0. Swung on and hit on a line. What a play by Peyton Leaper to get it in the air for out number one. He hit it on a line, and Leaper slid and made the nice catch. So now Caleb McDowell, who has reached base all but one time. He has been very good. A hit, a walk, a reach on an error, and a fly out. First pitch to McDowell. Poured down the heart of the plate. Fastball, strike one. Seven of four Whiskey Jacks. I'm Zach Berman on substitute play-by-play -play duty. I'll be with you tomorrow for both games as well. Of course, both those seven inning games, it's a doubleheader. That one drops in for, called straight from Sellers. Count 0-2 to the right hand hitting McDowell. Two up for the Moo in the top of the ninth. Leaper, White, and Reller. Three dangerous hitters. The 0-2 pitch swung on and missed. What a pitch by Trent Sellers as he dialed it up and let it fly. There's two down in the eighth. So Ethan Sitzman, one for four. Due up, shortstop for the Whiskey Jacks. Righty to righty, first pitch to Sitzman from Sellers, and that's ball one. And boy, Sellers has some velocity. We don't have a radar gun, but I can tell you that, boy, he is throwing fast. Two outs, nobody on. The bottom of the eighth. The 1 0, and here's the pitch up high. 2 0. And boy, Sellers is throwing absolute gas. The 2 0. He's gotten the first two out. The pitch from Sellers down the heart of the plate. Strike one to Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman has been good. All in all, it's been a great night for the Whiskey Jack offense. Seven runs, eight hits, two errors. Fremont, four runs, eight hits, two errors. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and it's hit on the line. Foul. The story of the game is all the, run the base runners that Fremont has left on base. They've left nine runners on base. Righty to righty, Sellers deals. And here's the delivery from Trent Sellers, the pitch. Low in the dirt, we go full. The payoff pitch in coming to Sitzman. Sellers looking to work a one, two, three, eighth. Sellers out of Lewis Clark State in Kennewick, Washington. Here's a full count, three, two pitch and swung on it. Hit on the ground through for a base hit in the left field for Sitzman. And he's got his second hit of the contest. And Jake Jelly looks to extend the inning. Jelly, of course, hit into the fielder's choice that resulted in the go-ahead run. Jelly, the teammate of Moo right fielder Brock Reller. Sellers deals to Jelly. First pitch righty to righty in the dirt. Ball one. Sellers looks so good on those first two at bats and he's starting to lose his strike zone a little bit. Sellers. Ready. And deals the runner off first Sitzman. Here's the pitch. Swung on and blooped and that's gonna get through for another base hit. 
Rounding second, going to third is Sitzman. He's gonna get in without a throw. And a two out threat developing for the Whiskey Jacks. First and third, two outs. And Jackson Sorensen, who is 0 for 4. D digs in against the righty Sellers. First and third, two outs. The Whiskey Jacks can all but put this thing away. Against the Fremont Moo, the first pitch is low for a called strike one. Sorensen, 0 for 4. The 0 1 with runners off the corner. Sitzman off third, Jelly off first. Here's the 0 1. High, ball one. Of course, join us right back here tomorrow on Whiskey Jacks, our official YouTube channel. We got two for you, two seven inning double header games against the Fremont Moo. And also come out to Craft Field if you can. It should be fun. We got the Superstars in town tomorrow. The 1-1 one -one is over the outside part of the plate, but not called. For ball two, two balls and a strike now the count. Two and one, runners off first and third. Here's the 2-1, Sellers deals, inside, called strike two. Good pitch. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. For Wheat City, they scored two in the first and five in the seventh. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Runners on the corners, righty to lefty. Sellers deals, swung on and missed. So Sellers gets out of the jam scoreless and the Whiskey Jacks three outs away from victory, but they're gonna have to deal with the heart of the Moo order in the ninth. We will come back after eight. Seven of four, Wheat City. Top of the ninth inning, three outs to work with. And the new pitcher, the new pitcher in is, we'll get you his name in a second. Keenan O'Brien, new catcher behind the plate. And Peyton Leeper at the plate. Leaper, White, and Reller in the top of the ninth inning. Ready to go on the top of the ninth inning. Seven to four, Wheat City leads Fremont. Pitch first pitch eight. outside, Wheat ball one. One zero oh is fouled ball. back, one and one. Record of one and one, a five 
One ball, one strike, nobody out. And the pitch is outside two and one. The two one. And here's the pitch outside three and one. And you don't want to get runners on for these next two Moo batters. The new pitcher for the Moo, we will get you his name in a second, is Will Hadley. 3-1, I'll get you his stat line in a bit. Here's the pitch, swung on and high in the air, center field, that is deep into left center and that ball is gonna be caught out in left field by Owen Viano. That ball hung up there, out number one. First pitch inside to Luke White, count one and oh. Here's the one oh, and it's popped in the air, foul, count one and one. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch and White swings and misses. Will Hadley looking good. The one two pitch incoming. Hadley to Luke White. Here's the one two. Inside and high, two and two. Two balls, two strikes and one out. White trying to Will the move back in? They trail 7 4. The 2 2, Hadley deals. And it hits him. Or are they going to call it? What are they going to call it? They're going to call it a foul ball, foul tip. The 2 2 pitch, here it comes. And it's high, 3 and 2. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Or one out. Here is the full count, 3-2 pitch. Hadley deals, or Hadley, deals to White, the 3-2. Swings and chops it foul. White swings and misses on the 3-2 pitch and the Moo one out away from losing to the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. And it's gonna come down to Brock Reller who's looking to keep his hit streak alive. Top of the ninth, two outs, seven for Wheat City. Reller digs in against the righty. Hadley first pitch outside one and oh. One and oh, here's the count. The pitch, Hadley deals, swung on and missed. One and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. The move down to the last two strikes. Here is the one one. Pitch over the outside part of the plate, just missing. Two and one. Would be a huge win for Wheat City. They'd climb to 10 and 13. The move would drop to 16 and seven. The two one to Reller. Low in the dirt, three and one. Should Reller reach, it is Howell and then Bush. The 3-1 pitch in the dirt, ball four. So it seems they were pitching around Brock Reller, so now a runner on first. So 
So now Taylor Howell, the last gasp for the move. Howell, who's had a pretty good day, one for three, but he's walked as well. First pitch to Howell, inside. Hadley's starting to struggle with his command, and now there's a meeting on the mound. So 7-4 our score. One and zero oh, drops in for a call. It's strike one. Count one and one. One ball, one strike, two outs, a runner on first. Will Hadley looking to finish the job in a save situation. One one. How swings and misses for strike two. It gets away. So going to second is Reller. So now, once again, the move down to their last pitch would be a nice win for Wheat City, would be their second win in a row. It's gonna be Reller off second, two outs, tying run in the on-deck circle would be Will Bush. Will Bush has been difficult. Preferably, you'd like to not have to deal with him. One and two to Howell. Dealing is Hadley, the pitch, inside, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here we go again. 2-2 two -two pitch incoming, and it's hit in the air, foul down the right field line. Wheat City dugout thought that was ball game. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, runner on second. Here we go again. The 2-2 two, two, one more time. Hadley is ready and deals. Sw hit on the ground a short. It's fielded and fired by Sitzman in time and the Whiskey Jacks defeat the Moose seven of four. The defending champs fall in Grand Forks. Your final seven of four, Wheat City on top. That's a big win for the Jacks as they take the first game of this three game set here between the defending champion Moo. Seven runs, 10 hits, two errors for Wheat City. For Fremont, four runs, eight hits, two errors. Once again, seven for your final. I'm Zach Berman saying good night from Wheat City. That's a Whiskey Jack victory and we will see you tomorrow night, 5.05 Central Standard Time for the first pitch of a two game doubleheader. Have a good night everybody.